Yes, Mayor, I'm uh, going to do uh, hopefully a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation on the uh, budget highlighting uh, where we are at the present time. As usual, we'll start with a brief discussion about budget caps. Uh, as you know, the uh, municipal budget is uh, controlled by state regulations, and there are two uh, limits that we must uh, build into our budget. And in uh, constructing this budget, there's an appropriations cap, which is the spending side, and there's also a cap on the amount to be raised by taxes, which is known as the levy cap. The spending cap is tied to the consumer price index for the prior year. The cap has been set by the state at 0% for this year, while the levy cap is fixed at 2% over the prior year. Is that uh, in focus, by the way? Can that look yeah, okay? Yeah. okay. On the appropriation cap calculation, the total general appropriations for 2015 were $14,513,814. There are exceptions uh, to that that get deducted from the cap base that total uh, 3.6, almost $3.7 million. These are the contributions for LOSAP, which is the Length of Service Award Program for our volunteer uh, fire departments and emergency squad members, our contribution to the library, grants, uh, capital improvement fund, debt service, and the reserve for uncollected taxes. Those are all uh, deducted from the total general appropriations to give you a cap base of $10,836,000. And as I said, the cap this year is 0%, so 0% of anything is zero. The, we had uh, 2014 cap bank available uh, to use in 2016 of $316,771. And the total increase allowed, therefore, to still be within the cap is that 316000 We did not do a cap bank ordinance in 2015, but from 2014, there was still cap available. So we are using some of that to accommodate the increase of spending within the cap of $179,000. The levy cap... This uh, shows you a history of the uh, cap bank. Uh, every year we have been uh, under the 2% uh, limit on the amount to be raised by taxes. Going back to 2013, there was $366,000 remaining that could have been used this year. It'll lapse after this year. We're not using it. 2014 bank available that can be used this year or next year of 423000 Last year's uh, levy cap bank uh, that can be used for 2016, 17, or 18 of 654,000. When you add the three of those together, there's a total levy cap bank from prior years of $1.4 million. The levy allowed this year is 8.9 million. The levy proposed is 8.1. So there's an additional $761,000 uh, of levy cap bank available 2017, 18, 19. Uh, so what you'll do is next year you'll see the 366 come off, the 761 go on, and the 1.4 becomes about 1.8 that would be available. Uh, I can't uh, imagine a circumstance in which we would uh, foresee a problem with staying within the 2% levy cap bank, or, uh, levy cap uh, for the foreseeable future, but we're, we're in good shape for years to come. And no, no bank from prior years is utilized, obviously. These are highlights of the budget. Total salaries and wages are increased by $18,000. Health insurance costs are increased by 50000 Employees' contribution towards health insurance increases from 265000 to 334. Uh, this is the last year of the phase-in for all of the employees. When the, when the health insurance contribution was initiated, the non-union employees and administrative staff all went uh, immediately to step four on the phase-in. The bargaining units were phased in at, uh, at the beginning of their new contracts. Uh, they now, in 2016, have reached the, uh, the fourth year. So we won't see uh, particularly large increases in the employees' contributions moving forward, but they will continue to make uh, a contribution towards the health insurance 
and it is keyed to income. So as their income goes up, their contribution may go up. Uh, but we won't see large increases. We'll see a, a steady amount that comes uh, from the employee's contribution. Uh, pension costs will go up 109000 this year. And you may recall uh, last year we had received a bill from the state for the pension, which was then subsequently modified when the state decided to take the increased employees' contributions and instead of investing them in the pension fund, uh, they reduced the employer's contribution in, uh, in a way to provide additional property tax relief. Um, I guess a matter of opinion as to whether that was appropriate or not, but it, it is what was done. Uh, debt service costs this year increased by $114,000. That's primarily uh, a result of increased debt authorization last year for some things that we've talked about many times, the improvements of the library, and in particular, the purchase of the new fire truck for the Green Village Fire Department. So in 2015, we did a bond ordinance for about $2.2 .2 million. Uh, where usually we're under a million in new uh, authorizations. So the uh, bond anticipation note that we did last summer and that'll become due this summer, uh, there's basically double the amount of uh, interest due, uh, and that is largely the uh, increase in the debt service cost for this year. The amount to be raised by taxes for local purposes is reduced $222,000. Uh, the amount to be raised by taxes for local purposes is what it funds the municipal budget. And it is a reduction of 222000 That follows a reduction last year of over 300000 And the reserve for uncollected taxes is reduced by $185,000. That, uh, to refresh everyone's memory and those who are, are new to this, the reserve for uncollected taxes is what is known as a, a non-spending appropriation. It is uh, an artificial way of increasing the total levy, uh, keeping in mind that the tax uh, collector, the, uh, the municipality collects taxes for uh, ourselves, for the county, and for the schools. We are the, the sole source or sole place that people write their checks to. We, so the county gets 100% of their levy no matter how much we collect. The school gets 100% of their levy, no matter how much we collect. So we're the only ones really at risk uh, for a shortfall in the collections. So we know, and the state knows, that municipalities and are not going to collect, uh, usually are not going to collect 100% of the taxes levied. So there's a requirement to create what is called this reserve for uncollected taxes. And basically what it is, if, and I'm going to use numbers that aren't real, but just for il illustrative purposes. If the total levy for the, the school, the county, and the municipality was $50 million, and you sent out tax bills for $50 million, but you knew that you were only going to collect, you know, 97 and a half or 98 percent of that, then you would have a shortfall, and the municipality would eat all of that shortfall. So the reserve for uncollected taxes is the difference. You, you take the total estimated levy of those three entities and divide by an estimated collection rate and it generates that number for the reserve for uncollected taxes. And this year that number for us is reduced by $185,000 and it's done uh, in two ways. One is that we the amount to be raised by taxes on the municipal side is lower. We're going to be using uh, some additional surplus but we also adjusted the anticipated rate of collections. In 2015, we ant, uh, estimated 97.2% for collections. This year, we're estimating 97.5% because in 2015, our actual collections were about 99%, which was you know, probably a historical high for us. So that gives us the, the effect of reducing the reserve for uncollected taxes. And the result of all of that, when you put it together, is that we will have a reduction again in the local purpose tax rate of one cent uh, below the 2015 rate, which now actually places us below 2005. And the reason I use 2005 as the comparison is that we, the last reval was done in 2004 when on the books uh, to be effective for the 2005 tax year. 
So it's difficult when you go back to prior to 2005 to compare uh, because the rate was much higher because values were much lower uh, and the reval always has the effect, assuming that your values go up, of adjusting your rate down. Okay, so that's why we use 2005 for the comparison, uh, but that is, uh, I think, pretty extraordinary that our local purpose tax rate is one cent, and that's a, just a slight uh, uh, amount below the 2005 rate. And as I said at the last meeting, what that means for local taxpayers is that if, if you've owned your home since 2005 when the new values went into effect and you haven't done anything to, uh, you haven't added on, you haven't made any significant renovations that led to an added assessment, if your assessment is the same as it was in 2005, your local purpose tax is the same. Your school tax is not the same, your county tax is probably not the same, but your local tax is definitely the same. These, this is a review, uh, an overview of the actual budget numbers. Uh, on the revenue side, we're going to use $3.1 million in surplus compared to last year where we used 2.8. Uh, local miscellaneous revenues are up about $48,000. State aid is anticipated. We still don't have formal notice from the state, but we have been told informally to use uh, the same number as last year, and that's $836,467. That, I believe, is now going to be the sixth year in a row that that's the amount of state aid. So that has not uh, gone up even a penny. Uh, public and private programs, you see a huge increase here from 27000 to 688 That is primarily the Safe Routes to School grant for the sidewalks on Lafayette and Spring Street, as well as a $100,000 grant to make our uh, generator, emergency generator here a permanent installation. Uh, neither of those have an impact on taxes. Those are uh, revenues that are offset by appropriations or appropriations offset by revenues, however you want to, I want to say it. Uh, delinquent taxes is actually the anticipated amount there is, is reduced from prior year uh, because, again, the uh, collector hit 99% of her collection, so the amount that was still delinquent is less. Uh, there again is a formula, there's a limit to how much you're allowed to anticipate from the uh, amount that's delinquent based on what your historical collections are. Uh, so uh, we are anticipating 450 this year, that's a reduction of 25. Construction code fees, we're anticipating a $50,000 increase over what we budgeted last year. Again, we will likely collect more than that. Uh, this is a percentage of uh, the actual number collected in 2015. Library tax, we know, is going up 26,000, so our contribution to the library goes from a million 15,000 to a million 41. And local purpose taxes, and this is where I talked about the rate, uh, is gonna go from 8.3 million to 8.1, $222,000 reduction. Total revenues would appear to be increased by $839,000, but again, when you look at the numbers, the majority of that is in public and private programs, which do not impact the tax rate. So, um, so bottom line, total appropriations uh, look, again, like $15.3 million or an increase of $839,000, uh, but uh, the the most important part of this, I believe, is the amount to be raised by taxes for local purposes, and that's reduced by 220000 This uh, pie chart shows how local taxes are used. 23% is for public safety, 7% is for the library, 9% for general government, uh, pensions and Social Security, 8% insurance, which includes health insurance for employees and our uh, general liability and workers' comp is at 16%. Recreation is at 3 That includes colony pool. Utilities and street lights are 3%. Public works, 21 Debt service, 7 And then that reserve for uncollected taxes that I described earlier actually makes up 10% of our tax dollars. The distribution between the three entities that are taxing uh, entities in the town. The school is now up to 68 percent. So out of every dollar that uh, people write to us, 68 cents goes to the school. The township and the county have uh, hold at 16 percent. 
those as, as time has gone on and we've held the line and the county's held the line and the school has had the 2% the increase that uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Sullivan mentioned earlier, uh, the school ticks up a little more. I think last year they were 67%, now they're at 68 uh, and it was pointed out to me that this kind of looks like uh, Ms. Pac-Man with the school uh, gobbling up the other pieces of pie. But um, I guess if we maybe turned it a little more sideways, it would really look like that. But I don't mean to editorialize. This is a history of the fund balance going back uh, to 2007, where we had uh, 3.4 million. Uh, it, we saw some decline in that each year until uh, 2011. We started to turn it around and build it back up. And as you know, at the end of 2015, we're at 4.8 million. That is uh, the primary reason that we're allow, uh, able uh, to recommend an increase in the amount of surplus to be used this year of 3.1 million. Uh, that still leaves us with 1.7. Uh, and that uh, fits within the surplus policy that the Township Committee adopted last year, uh, where we set a goal of maintaining a surplus that was equal to between 10 and 15 percent of total appropriations, and we're, we'll be at about 11 and a half or 12 percent. So we're well within the parameters of what we established. Uh, at the last meeting, when I did my presentation on this slide, uh, I misspoke and made mention of the fact that. Uh, when I arrived in 2000, the surplus had been virtually depleted uh, and was down to literally about $20,000. Um, when I went back uh, the next day and reviewed my own notes and uh, history, 1996 was actually the low year. It wasn't 2000. It was 1996 uh, that I think the, the committee had a beginning balance of $660,000 at the end of the prior year, and in that current year used uh, over 600000 So th there was about $20,000 left at the beginning of the year after the budget had been adopted back in, I think, so I think it was 1996. Uh, and then there was a, a, a steady increase um, going forward. So just to, to clarify that. State aid, again, but going back to 2007, we used to receive $1.2 million. Uh, that uh, declined for a couple of years, uh, several years until 2011. Uh, it reached its current state of 836000 and that's where it has been frozen ever since. Um, again, for people that work in municipal government, that's a bit of a pet peeve of ours because most of the, the state aid is actually uh, somewhat of a misnomer. It's money that was intended uh, for municipalities from the get-go. It was, it was our money. And the state, uh, out of the goodness of their heart, many years ago decided to collect it for us and redistribute it to the municipalities. And, uh, and when that happened, they began keeping larger and larger chunks of it for themselves. This is the municipal purpose tax rate going back to 2005, as I mentioned. So what you see is in 2005, the combined rate that included open space because, uh, you know, so that we would have a true comparison of the total for local purposes and open space. And in 2005, the rate was 0.269. That's 26.9 cents per hundred dollars of uh, assessed value. And in 2016, the budget as presented to you tonight, the rate if, uh, if adopted, will be 0.268, a, a tenth of a cent below 2005, but a full penny below 2015. And 2015, as you remember, was a full penny below 2014. Uh, and w we've really been pretty much frozen since about 2010, when we were at 29.6 cents. Uh, we stayed at 29.2, 29.2, 29, 29 last year 27.8, this year 26.8. Um, and I, I think that is a, a testament to the way that we have done business. A lot of people think that it is primarily due to our increase in rateables, and that has certainly helped us. But we have also done things that were, were significant reductions in cost that were permanent in nature. Uh, we have fewer employees today than we used to have in every department. We made changes in the way that we insure ourselves by joining the Morris County 
uh, joint insurance fund that uh, saved us money on our workers' comp and our general liability. We went into the state health benefits plan. That saved a substantial amount of money in our health insurance costs. So th there have been a variety. We have, you know, the, the, the state implemented the requirement for employees to contribute to health insurance. You know, that has led to a direct uh, savings for the municipality and not just us, but around the, around the state. So there are a number of things that we have done uh, proactively to reduce our costs and to reduce the, uh, the, the size of our footprint in the municipality by reducing the size of, of local government. Uh, and that's re that's really reflected in these numbers, uh, along with the increase in renewables. The budget is required to disclose any structural imbalances. There are four categories that must be disclosed. Revenues at risk. Uh, this budget does utilize $100,000 of capital surplus. This will likely be the last year that that is used. Capital surplus is generated when you when we do bond ordinances and fund them. Uh, and projects are completed and there's funds remaining, uh, in, we eventually wind up canceling those balances and they go to capital surplus and can be used either, you can either reappropriate them for uh, capital improvements or take them in as a special item of revenue. That's what we're doing here for 100,000. There are no non-recurring cost reductions. All of the cost reduction measures that we've been utilizing have been permanent in nature. We're required to anticipate uh, moving forward 2017. Uh, I would certainly expect that labor costs would increase by approximately one to one and a half percent. We do have uh, negotiations this year with the PBA for a new contract. Health insurance has been trending at around seven to ten percent a year. I don't, you know, I haven't seen anything to suggest that that will change unless the state, in, in fact. Uh, implements some of the recommendations or most of the recommendations in the recent uh, commission report that was issued and which I think you're all probably familiar with. Um, if they do that, there there is likely to then be some substantial uh, changes in the cost of health insurance, but time will tell. Um, as far as structural imbalance offsets, you know, if you consider an increase in uh, you know, small increases in labor costs to be a structural imbalance, you know, we're going to continue to seek additional shared services with our neighbors and uh, reductions in personnel costs wherever we can. To summarize, after four years in a row with no increase in the local purpose tax rate and a one cent reduction in 2015, the 2016 budget provides for another one cent reduction to the rate which is now below the rate in place in 2005, the year the last property revaluation was implemented. The township contribution to the joint library has increased $26,000 to a total of 1,041,000. Our share is 54% with the borough contributing the other 46% or 886,998 dollars. And again, not to editorialize, but the agreement that is in place with the borough when the joint library was created, uh, there is a formula, there's a, a state statute requirement that uh, libraries be funded at a minimum uh, one third of a mil. That's like 0 .0033 out to, I don't know how many decimal places of your total rateables. So the way that it works with us is that you take the combined equalized values of the two towns, apply that third of a mil and that generates a number. And then per the agreement with the library or with the borough, the proportionate shares are distributed based on population. So when you do that calculation, we wind up with 54% of the library budget as uh, our obligation. Municipal open space tax as discussed earlier is proposed to remain at one half of a cent. And surplus has been increased from $3.4 million in 2007 to $4.88 million at the end of 2015. It's been used primarily to stabilize taxes and offset the reduction of state aid in the years in between. The balance remaining is within the guidelines adopted in the township surplus policy. Uh, capital budget, we're looking to continue the six-year plan that, uh, that we've adopted previously. Uh, with various uh, road improvements, uh, proposing to uh, try to finish up 
the work in Wickham Woods this year. The uh, section that was not done last year will do the, the drainage this year and probably the paving in the early part of 2017. Uh, we are on the hook for a, sep a second contribution to the library for their capital improvements. We only uh, budgeted last year 50% of what had been requested and approved. Uh, there is ongoing uh, help for the fire departments to purchase fire safety equipment, various building improvements, and re including repairs to this building, <coughs> purchase of DPW equipment, which this year is primarily uh, some pickup trucks with plows, and improvements to Colony Pool, uh, which is going to be likely the replacement of the concrete wall, which is uh, showing I its age at this point. That's work that we would look to do in right after the summer. And that is it. So if there are any questions, I'd be glad to entertain them. Otherwise, I would just ask uh, and recommend that you introduce the budget as proposed. Mayor, could you hear that OK? Yeah, I did. Thank you very much, Tom. And uh, again, I just want to reiterate, you know, on behalf of the committee, our thanks to you uh, over these past several months in putting these presentations together, uh, which offers not only ourselves, but certainly all residents of Chatham Township a, a behind the scenes look, a pull back the curtain look, whatever you want to call it, a closer look at how uh, their tax dollars are being spent. So I appreciate you, uh, your continued efforts in, in, in doing this. And obviously a reminder to all residents that this presentation, as with all the other prior presentations, will appear on the website uh, for their review as well. But in general, uh, an overall comment in the 2016 budget, I think it's certainly something that the entire committee should be proud of, the fact that we're able to offer residents a tax cut for the second year in a row, which reflecting the lowest local purpose tax rate in more than 10 years, which I think is truly, truly an incredible uh, accomplishment. And I would say few of any municipalities in New Jersey can tout this significant accomplishment. So uh, I think it's something we should all be proud of. And I think this budget further highlights our efforts uh, to be fiscally conservative as we run this township. So thank you again, Tom, and uh, open it up for any other further comments or discussion to the committee. Well said, Kurt. I'd echo it. Thank you, Tom. Any other comments? Discussion? Tom, I just have one question. Uh, you, you, you referenced... I'm sorry, could you give your name and address? <laughs> <laughs> on, on the Safe Routes to Schools, you identified yeah. that as, as the grant and that it's just pass through. Um, but we also uh, received notification regarding the design of uh, services that are going to be in grant. Should that be increased to accommodate? Now, the, well, we haven't gotten the award letter yet. You'll remember I talked to you. I said we need a number from them. So what's going to wind up happening once we get an actual award, then we'll do an amendment to add it to the budget. So, so yeah, that, that's worth noting just that there will be additional grant money coming that's related to the safe routes to school for the engineering design that we've previously talked about. And we'll do that as an amendment to the budget once we have the documentation in place. 